Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on dynamic study of a power system. A dynamic study of a power system is performed when there, uh, there is a contingency in a power system and we want, want to uh, investigate the frequency response of the system. Contingencies can include line flips, interconnection flips or generation flips, stuff like that. In this experiment, we will simulate a generation trip and observe the frequency response of the system. We will use the same 7 bus system that we used in our load flow tutorial. In fact, we will use the load flow, uh, all the data from the load, load flow experiments with very little modification and use that to further investigate into the frequency response. So let's dig in. Let us open our PCF, which is version 2.81. First thing first, we need to go to file preferences and still check if the database and network are, s are of the in the same path as the main folder where we have been working, experimenting and doing our load flow. Uh, in my case, I have been doing in the F drive and the tutorial folder where all my files are stored. So make sure to uh, enter the path in both database and network item and press OK. After that, you can open your study using tabular format. You can open the load flow study conducted in load flow tutorial. I uh, I'll be using the last network is associated. So this is the entered data from the load flow experiment. Let me open the other input data. Let me open the fixed step transformer data, generator data, line data, and finally the static load data. So these are all the data I, I entered in the load flow experiment. As I have mentioned, we'll be conducting a generation trip scenario and observe the frequency response. We had three generators in our system, generation one, two, three, and five. One, generation one was a swing generator and uh, the other two were voltage control generator. If we are to trip one generator, this must, must be either G3 or G5. But as you can see, uh, G3 or G5 uh, produce very high amount of active power, 500 megawatt and 400 megawatt. Uh, if you use this value and trip G3 or G5 as it is, the frequency response will, will be declining. The frequency will be declining very fast. The frequency response will be very bad and promptly going to black out maybe. So, uh, for this experiment, we can change the value. Let, uh, let us trip generation 5. So we'll change the active generation of generation 5 to 150 megawatt. Uh, look, uh, it is changed here also. So for 150 megawatt, we'll trip generation 5 and observe the response of the frequency. So as we have changed the data, we need to perform load flow again. For this, we have to select the solver for power flow analysis go to study monitoring tab and select press select uh, as i have loaded the previous uh, lo previously experimented study file no components have been added or selected and finally i have to go to solve select newton raphson select these options and make sure to check this option named create input file for sim step this allows you to save the solution file of the load flow. A and now if you click on solve, you can save the load flow solution. Uh, you can give it, give it a definite name. I'll give it a name load flow dot uh, underscore solve underscore PS. Let me override it. Or you can just give it a different name. So yes, our load flow is converged with three iterations and now we are good to go for the transient simulation. For this, we are, uh, first you need to uncheck this uh, little icon right here. This says cross, shows cross. Now it is not showing cross. We can move on to the next study. We'll do, uh, we go to select solver under the analysis menu and go to transient stability analysis. Okay. So now we'll go to analysis study. First thing we need to uh, specify how many time uh, or the total simulation time we want to observe. Let's uh, let us assume we want to observe for 20 seconds, and the frequency of our system will be 50 hertz. For your case, it can be 50 or 50 hertz uh, according to your wish. And the base power MVA 
is in most uh, of the cases is 100 MVA in a power system. So let us escape that. In the load flow data, data we need to specify the solution file that we just obtained from the load flow. This is the underscore TS. This is the solution file I obtained. Let us select that. Okay, moving on to the global load tab. This tab enables us to specify the type of load we are modeling. You know, there are three types of load in a power system, constant current, constant voltage and constant impedance load. For constant impedance load, both NP and NQ values are two. And we are keeping pre frequency and Q frequency values zero. This means that we are not allowing frequency dependent loads or the like induction motors in our system. Then we need to go to global selection tab. This tab allows us to activate or exclude generation set points or governor control of the generators. For this experiment, we'll just exclude the control. And finally, uh, we need to go to relay zone or areas. So in a frequency response study, when a generation trip or a contingency occurs, the frequency will drop. When a generation will, fr when a, when a generator trips, the frequency drops. But if you don't try to stop it by any other means of the power system, the frequency response will continue to drop until it enters into blackout, system-wide blackout. So in order to restrain the rate of uh, change of frequency, you need to incorporate a under frequency load shedding scheme so that you can arrest the declination of the frequency. So for that, we'll introduce a under frequency load shedding scheme. We'll go to relay slash zone slash areas. And under that, we have a low frequency relay box. We'll click on add or edit. We'll click on new and uh, give a name for our load shedding scheme. So we'll just call it uh, UFLS one perhaps. So every UFLS scheme or under frequency load shedding scheme has seven different uh, parameters to tune. The first uh, parameter is the first frequency threshold, which is the frequency that we want our UFLS to occur uh, to load shed its load first. Let us choose this as 49.5 Hertz. And we want to, uh, suppose we want to shed 10% of our total load when the frequency, the system frequency falls below 49.5 Hertz. Let us continue the, se uh, specify the second frequency threshold as 49 Hertz. When for, uh, the system frequency falls further below 49 Hertz, additional 10% of the load will be shed. And finally, if the system frequency falls below 48.5 Hertz, uh, additional 10% of the load will be shed. And the relay operating time is the relay of the under frequency load shedding scheme, which will shed the load. So you can uh, choose it to point uh, to be point 0.1 second, or it can be lowered uh, in value for many modern relays. So this is our unique load shedding scheme. Keep in mind that this load shedding scheme is very much, will be very much according to your liking and your design and for the system requirements. Let us choose this and see what happens. So let's uh, click OK. We need now need to go to events. What do you want to achieve? We want to actually trip the generator three. Let us click on edit, click on add, and from disconnect option, we can see disconnect generator. Let's say we want to uh, disconnect the generator at cycle 10 which is 0.2 second and the generator ID is G5. Remember we wanted to trip generation G5 which is 150 megawatt. Okay, we click on apply. Okay, and finally we uh, go to the monitoring tab. We want to specify here which quantities we want to measure. We want to see. We want to see the frequency response. So we can see the frequency response in any buses. So let us choose bus seven add that so we can see the frequency response on bus 7. Remember it will be same on all the buses. So let's click OK and OK here and OK. Uh, sorry, yeah, I uh, forgot to mention that I didn't choose an affected zone for the UFLS relay to operate. 
So I'm clicking no and going to relay or slash zone says areas. We have to specify for which zone or area the UFLS scheme will be op activated. So let's uh, we have to click on UFLS, then a relay property or zone appears. We have to click on this option. Remember, we have only one zone that is zone zero in our power system. If our zone has multiple, if our system has multiple zones, suppose uh, it has five zones, zone one, two, three, four, five, we can select zone one, three, and five, suppose, for uh, this UFLS scheme to operate in the selected zone. You can select the zone according to your liking. So uh, our UFLS scheme will be equally applicable to all the buses of our power system as there is only one zone. So we are now complete. Let's click on OK. And now we are ready to simulate. We will we'll go on, go to solve. We'll give a definite name. Let's say dynamic simulation. And we'll solve by pressing the green button. It is being simulated for 20 seconds. And PSAP says the analysis has been completed successfully. And now we can uh, see the frequency at bus 7. and clicking done and OK. This is the frequency response of at bus 7, which is the frequency response of the system. If you take a closer look, you can see there is a short spike uh, at 49.34 seconds, uh, or yeah, 49.34 seconds. And uh, no, I guess it is in cycles. So yeah, at 49 cycles and at 40 sorry 145 cycle and cycle 65 these are the two stages of UFLS being activated in this case see the frequency response was a straight line here the slope of the straight line changed between this interval uh, stage of the UFLS the first stage of the UFLS got activated at this point so that 10% of the system load was shared an additional 10% of the system load was shared at this point. Okay, and if you want to see all the data points of this graph, you can close this, go to report, go to start sign view, click on uh, the add a uh, small plus icon, expand it, go to dynamic simulation that uh, the name we gave to the simulation, click on this, select the bus frequency again plot it, select done, and you can see the frequency uh, data points of this curve is shown here. You can, this uh, data can be exported to Excel. Oops, sorry, uh, sign view got crashed. Let me select it once again. So now the frequency response data can be seen here and this data can be exported to Excel, Microsoft Excel for further modification. So for doing that, you can click on this box right here, right click, go to export and uh, for me the 2 MS Excel option doesn't work somehow. Uh, so you can do is to export to Internet Explorer. Let me show you how it, this works. So in the Internet Explorer, you got all the frequency values. You can just click on Control A on your keyboard, press Control C for copy, and open Microsoft Excel in your PC. Let me open it up. You can open a blank workbook and Control B, press Control B on your keyboard, and voila, this is the data from the simulation. You can further edit it in power uh, in Microsoft Excel for different plots or different figures and you can understand how the frequency is being uh, is responding to the contingency we have shown here so that was all from my side uh, this tutorial we discussed the frequency response of a system for a generation trip hope you liked it and stay tuned for more tutorials coming thank you